Well, we are live. Good evening, folks, and welcome to the Horror Corner. I'm your host, Sean Patrick Urshan, and this week we are doing a live stream commentary, uh, continuing the series of uh, Hammer Dracula films. <clears throat> and today we are doing the fifth entry, uh, Taste the Blood of Dracula, which was released in 1970. Uh, directed by Peter Sazdy. Yes, starring, of course, Christopher Lee as Count Dracula. <laughs> it was just absolutely amazing in the role. And uh, this film also stars Linda Hayden in the role of Alice Hargood. You may know Linda Hayden from uh, Blood on Satan's Claw, another uh, great British horror film. Uh, also, John Carson as well, who you might know from Plague of the Zombies and uh, Captain Kronos, Vampire Hunter, which I just did a review on. If you guys haven't seen that, uh, check that out. Check my review of uh, Captain Kronos, Vampire Hunter. Uh, film also stars uh, Ralph Bates in the role of Lord Courtly. Uh, and this film actually was not originally supposed to have Christopher Lee as Dracula. Uh, it was just supposed to be kind of a showcase for Ralph Bates kind of uh, taking on the mantle, so to speak. Uh, not at, really as Dracula, I don't think. I just he, he was just supposed to be Lord Courtly in this movie. It's supposed to be based around him. Uh, and it wasn't really supposed to be a Dracula story, per se. Um, but the studio did not want that. They wanted Christopher Lee as Dracula in this movie, you know. Um, and, of course, Christopher Lee didn't really want to play the role anymore. He was kind of done with it. But they kind of said, from what I hear, they kind of bribed him into doing it. Well, you know, if you don't do this, people are going to be put out of jobs, you know. And they kind of made him feel all bad about it. Be like, okay, I don't want to put people out of work. I'll do it, <laughs> you know. Uh, so, I guess it's a matter of uh, opinion whether it's uh, would have been better without Christopher Lee if it just would have been that particular story. But me personally, I'm I'm glad Christopher Lee did it because uh, he does fit right into the story. I think you know the way they uh, kind of work the story around him and to include him in it. I don't really know necessarily what changes they had to make, but uh, I think it all really works and works really well because this is definitely one of the best sequels in the franchise, I think, the Hammer Dracula franchise. Um, I think most people would say that. I, I hear a lot of good things about Taste of Blood Dracula. It has a pretty good reputation. Um, if I had any, uh, issues with the film, it's that I feel like Chris Billy doesn't have enough to do, or he doesn't have enough lines, uh, but his presence is, is amazing, and you know, he does some of his best stuff as far as being menacing in his presence, <laughs> uh, it doesn't even matter if he has a lot of lines, it's just, he's just awesome, you know? Anytime he's on screen, um, I am hooked, you know, I'm hooked in, reeled in. Uh, the thing uh, that makes this film so good is I really enjoy the plot of this film uh, more than any of the other sequels in the franchise. I think this has the best plot, uh, the most interesting plot, the, the best cast of actors, too. Uh, barring, of course, Peter Cushing didn't return for this one. Um, yeah. Another funny thing is uh, there was another Hammer Dracula film released the same year, and that is um, Scars of Dracula with Christopher Lee. <laughs> like, the same year. I don't know why I, I don't know why they did that, why they rushed that so much, you know. If they hadn't rushed Scars of Dracula so much, maybe it would have been better but as it is, I still love Scars of Dracula, and I love Taste the Blood of Dracula. Awesome film. Uh, so yeah, we got 
two really good Dracula films in the same year, 1970, also had the DVD of Taste of Blood Dracula. Now, I shall dedicate this uh, episode of Horror Corner live commentary to the late great Veronica Carlson, uh, who just recently passed away. Um, I literally got her autograph in the mail like maybe a couple days before she passed away. It's it's crazy. It's, it's just crazy. And I had just done the uh, Dracula Has Risen from the Grave live commentary. I don't know, what, what was that? Maybe two weeks before? Not even, probably. Before she passed away, so it's kind of crazy. So yes, this show is dedicated to uh, Veronica Carlson. Uh, she was a great actress, uh, well-known in the Hammer uh, canon. She had done several Hammer films, you know. Dracula has risen from the grave. You know, she did a couple of the Frankenstein films. A horror of Frankenstein. Frankenstein must be destroyed. Frankenstein and the monster from hell. So, yeah. Uh, as well as some other films outside of Hammer, of course. Uh, so, yes. Rest in peace. The lovely, the late, the legendary Veronica Carlson. We dedicate this show to you. Um. All right, guys, I'll give you a few minutes. If you're out there in the chat, I know it's kind of weird time to be doing it uh, in the daytime, in the afternoon. Most people are at work right now, but uh, I'm going to have fun with it anyway. And if you guys want to watch and uh, do your uh, watch along with me, uh, you can do it on the replay, of course. And you can pop in your copy of Taste the Blood. Of Dracula. I love that name, by the way. That is such an awesome title. Taste the Blood of Dracula. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> That's amazing. Amazing title. <laughs> uh, yeah, so come enjoy one of my favorite Hammer Dracula films starring Christopher Lee as the great, the menacing Count Dracula, the king of all vampires in this really good film and i think this film here has the best gothic atmosphere out of any of the hammer films <laughs> uh amazing amazing stuff uh the way it's shot the direction is beautiful it's beautifully shot the gothic structures the castles uh the old abandoned church where uh dracula resides you know where they have these satanic rituals uh, that's another thing I found really interesting about this film is they kind of brought uh, the satanic aspect into this, you know, with the black magic rites and the um, black mass. They used the black mass to conjure up Dracula. I thought that was something different. That was something interesting. And, you know, they did a lot of stuff like that in the 70s, you know, satanic stuff and witchcraft and black magic and stuff. Uh, and I thought that fit nicely in with the Dracula story, you know. <laughs> uh, I thought it was a really cool way of bringing them back, you know, something different. And they continued that throughout the series. They did that again in uh, Dracula AD 1972, and obviously the satanic rites of Dracula, that's what they call the movie. <laughs> uh, so yeah, this started the whole satanic rites thing in uh, the Hammer Dracula series. <laughs> Uh, so, all right, guys, so in a couple minutes, we'll be uh, grabbing my trusty remote control and starting the film, Taste the Blood of Dracula. If you'd like to join me, grab your copy of Taste the Blood of Dracula, whether it's DVD or Blu-ray or whatever. Uh, I'm hoping to see a 4K collector's edition uh, soon from Hammer Films, because I know that Hammer... Um, I guess got a big, huge deal where they're going to, you know, uh, they're going to remaster the whole Hammer discography, you know. I'm really looking forward to that. They're also going to be coming out with new films and, uh, yeah, some really exciting stuff. So a lot coming soon from Hammer, you know, and I'm, I'm hoping to get some Hammer 4Ks, you know. <laughs> it's about time we see, uh, 
this one, for Christ's sake, get a decent release of Horror of Dracula. Damn it, I want a collector's edition of this with all kinds of making up stuff and interviews and, and uh, obviously the 4K um, picture quality and sound and everything uh, because that movie deserves it. If any movie deserves a special edition, collector's edition uh, Blu-ray or um, 4K release, it is Horror of Dracula, which I consider to be, personally, the best Hammer film ever. <laughs> uh, so, let's get to it, shall we? Grab your trusty remotes and join me in Hammer Dracula. Taste the blood of Dracula from 1970. I'm going to get ready push play here and let's get started and i'm gonna have a lot of fun i'll be talking about the movie i'll be talking about the hammer dracula franchise along the way might even do a little christopher lee imitations who knows <laughs> uh, but we're gonna have some fun all right let's get started with this awesome score uh from hammer dracula taste the blood of dracula awesome movie Oh, yeah, JKS 80s horror fan house. Welcome, welcome. Long live Hammer. Hell yeah. If you guys are just joining us, we are doing a watch along of Taste the Blood of Dracula <laughs> from Hammer Films 1970, starring Christopher Lee. Um. Linda Hayden, Ralph Bates, John Carson, and uh, yeah, Isla Fisher. A great cast. <laughs> You're at work listening? Hey. Welcome. So, another thing I love about this film, it has some good continuity with uh, Dracula Has Risen from the Grave. It kind of picks up right where that left off. We see this... Dude in the uh, stagecoach at the beginning, uh, he's kind of a salesman that these random people picked up and, you know, he's trying to sell them something. <laughs> like the snow globe thing. He's like, it's beautiful. I'll give it for you for six, six pounds, you know. <laughs> the dude's like, I want it. I want it. One pound, then. <laughs> and they kick his ass right out the coach. And uh, he ends up in the wrong place at the wrong time. Guess where? Right where Dracula has met his death. At the hands of uh, the other guy named Paul from <laughs> Dracula's Rest from the Grave. And Veronica Carlson, you know, he got... At the end of that movie, Dracula has risen from the grave. You saw he was impaled onto the cross. Uh, taken from the church, from the Monsignor. You know? <laughs> and uh, and when this movie opens, there we see him. You know, we see him impaled. And he'll go, oh! You know, <laughs> with the blood uh, dripping from his eyeballs. And, oh! Uh... And we see him disintegrate into ashes and dust, and his blood is nothing but powder. And uh, and he's gone. We see nothing but the cape and the cowl and the uh, and the ring that he had, and the uh, the uh, necklace he had with the Dracula emblem on it. Hey, you can hear Dracula scream. Ah! Dude's like, my God. <laughs> ah! Great shots here in the dark woods, you know. There's so many great sets in this film, too. It's a very dark film. I'd say this might be the darkest film in the Hammer Dracula series. Very, very gothic and uh, 
<laughs> Another interesting thing is Dracula has risen from the grave was rated uh rated G. <laughs> but this film was the first in the series to be rated R. Look at that. <laughs> The funny thing is, I don't see a whole lot of difference, although there is, I suppose, the aspects of the Satanism, and uh, the there is some nudity in it. There's definitely some sex, the more sexuality and nudity. At one point, these guys go to a brothel, and then and the girls are, like, stripping and naked and stuff, you know? So, yeah, I suppose this is a more... Risque uh, Dracula film in the Hammer series, but I mean Dracula has risen from the grave had that as well. It didn't have nudity, but it it had a lot of blood, you know. <laughs> in that scene, there's the scene where Dracula gets the stake through his heart. You know, we see it all, and then you see him take it out of his chest and launch it at the guy. And in the end, he gets impaled on the cross, and you see the gore and the blood. You know, wow, PG movie. Darker the better. Yes, that's right. <laughs> yeah, this is definitely a dark one. Dracula's blood. Taste the blood of Dracula. Love it. <laughs> Starring Christopher Lee. Right here, you know, start at the ch outside the church and uh, meet all the characters, most of the cast here. Uh, the beautiful, the lovely Linda Hayden. You get the beautiful classic period style uh, costume design. Uh, fantastic, as always. This film just looks great, you know. <laughs> and even some of the scenes that are kind of in the daylight are 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 dim you know it's not you never see that bright daylight you know like this scene here is still see a little bit of fog and you know it's not bright bright <laughs> you could tell it's cold the guys you could see the guy's breath you could tell it's cold and probably it takes place in the winter time i would think And here we meet Alice Hargood, played by Linda Hayden, and uh, her boyfriend Paul, uh, Paul Paxton, played by Anthony Corlin in the film. And, uh, you know, Alice's father does not approve of their relationship. <laughs> uh, why, we don't know. They never really explain why. He just hates him. Um, I think mainly he doesn't want anyone to be with no man is good enough for his daughter. So, you know, he's got a weird kind of relationship with the daughter. I don't know if it's like, you know, <laughs> it's just kind of odd. He won't even let her out of the house pretty much, you know, <laughs> barely <laughs> just. Sends her up to her, sends her up to her room upstairs, you know, and she pretty much spends her life in that room upstairs, you know. He goes, you will apologize for your behavior. What behavior? Would you prefer a studio remaking Hammer movies or the original movies being remastered? Hmm. Never thought about them remaking the Hammer films like this. 
I don't know how I'd feel about that. I have to think about that, but I certainly want them to be remastered. <laughs> you never liked him, but you can't help that. You stop behaving like a harlot. <laughs> this guy is a piece of work. He's like, in the house of God, you act like this. And then you find out that he <laughs> is the complete opposite of a church-going man, you know? He's kind of a perv, actually, <laughs> underneath the surface. And those kind of makes things more personal, kind of, it seems, like when they bring religious elements into these films, you know? Because uh, you have to have something to go against the evil, you know? I was fine, it makes things more interesting when you bring religious elements into the Dracula films or stuff like the exorcist and the omen and things like that <laughs> alice's hair and this and this scene here, I notice, is completely different than it is later on. I wonder if that's a wig. I'm not sure. It could be. Or if she just, like, cheesed up her hair. Because when you see it later on, she has long, straight hair. Blonde hair. Here comes Alice's father, you know, ready to engage in some debauchery with his buddies. They're off into the stagecoach on their way to the brothel, <laughs> the local brothel. He tells his poor wife, you know, I got some charity work to do. <laughs> yeah, okay. Suppose you're contributing to the whorehouse, <laughs> keeping it going. <laughs> but it's interesting, these rich aristocrats, you know, that are well-to-do and uh, uh, considered upstanding members of the community are doing this, like, underground debauchery, you know? <laughs> Just people like that in real life, you know? They have nothing better to do with their money than they get bored and, you know, they want the next high. And that's and that's exactly what this movie is kind of about. They're constantly looking for the next high, the next uh, level of craziness or, you know, adventure. But they're going about it in all the wrong ways, you know, <laughs> the dark ways. <laughs> and this, uh, this is the first time I can think of there being a, a gay character in one of the Hammer movies, too. Correct me if I'm wrong. Oh, the leader of the, the whorehouse is, is gay. Gets everything all set up for them, you know, all the girls together. I 
and I didn't realize till recently that um, Madeline Smith is in this part, <laughs> who uh, you might know from the Vampire Lovers, yeah, among other films, you know. But yeah, another one of my favorite horror films. Uh, she makes an appearance here. She's one of the working girls. You could tell right away when you see her. Her bright, like, beaming eyes, you know. Beautiful uh, eyes. You got this girl uh, dancing around with a sneak. They got the funky music going in there. You got like five or six gorgeous women in there. Taking their clothes off. <laughs> and they, they see Madeline Smith, yeah. With the Alice's father. So if you guys watch this. Uh, yeah, Madeline Smith is in this movie. This is a small role, but... You can tell it right away that it's her with, the, with those bright, beautiful eyes. <laughs> hmm. But you can tell Mr. Hargood is not really amused. You can tell he's bored, you know. That they they probably do the same thing all the time, every day, every week. Um and they've just kind of reached the limit, you know, that's it's, it's it's no longer that fun, you know, for for this guy at least. The other guys seem to be having fun though. <laughs> and here you got Lord Courtly making his presence known, barging into the uh, to the brothel. And they see some uh, nudity there. See the girl's boobs. <laughs> see a couple of them. And the head of the brothels trying desperately to, you know, get him out of there, you know. <laughs> You can't come in here. And he, you can see he just like snaps his finger and the, and the woman goes towards him. You can, uh, they're all captivated by this guy, you know. This handsome young guy with a cape and well-dressed and well-spoken, but there's something off about him. Pimp sweet ahoy, Sean says trash pitcher show. What's up, Marty? Long time no see. <laughs> Two days to be exact. Yeah, I know it's kind of a weird time to be doing this in um, the broad daylight. I happen to have some time in my hands. Uh, I'm not working at my day job today. I had the day off. I'll, I'll be working to my, tonight at my other job. But <laughs> but even this, the set design of the brothel is very intricate. And, you know, every set in this movie is really detailed and beautiful. And, you know.
You certainly would be comfortable in this place if you. <laughs> it's not some nasty, seedy, dirty brothel. It's very clean and, you know, looks kind of downright comfortable. <laughs> And the rich guys are intrigued. Who is this guy? Who is this guy? You know, what, what's going on with him? And they're like, do I know you? Did I take your woman away? <laughs> We'd like to talk to you over supper. I guess this guy's pretty well known uh, in town as being this dark, devious dude with, you know, he's into black magic and stuff. And woo! You almost got a little peak of Linda Hayden there, huh? <laughs> Of course, if you want to see a little more, see Blood on Satan's Claw. <laughs> I, re I really like her in this movie. She really plays her part well, even though she's kind of the damsel, you know, the typical damsel in distress. I, I just think she plays her role very well. You care about her, you know, you care about her character. You don't want her to succumb to the evil of Dracula. And we also feel bad for the way her father treats her, you know, like a piece of crap, you know? Like she's basically chained up in a room practically, you know? She can't do anything, go anywhere, see anybody, you know? While he can do whatever the hell he wants, gallivanting around town, messing with women, you know, behind his wife's back, you know. Quite the hypocrite. You go to, you go to church every Sunday, yet you're out doing these devious things, you know. So here all the, the rich socialites are uh, gathered around at dinner, uh, talking to Lord Courtley and, uh, you know, trying to see uh, what kind of adventure they can get into. Uh, Trash Picture Show says, Sean, I love this flick, but I always wondered, what if the other guys had drank the blood? Would they have turned into Dracula too? Would they have become Triacula? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. They probably would just be vampires. I, sp I don't know. My guess is they would just be vampires. You know. Well, maybe they would have just died like it seemed like Lord Courtley once he drank the uh, blood. Well, we'll get into that shortly. <laughs> we haven't gotten that far yet. Right now, Lord Courtley's saying, you know, would you be willing to sell your soul to the devil? What do you mean, says John Carson? I mean exactly that. Ralph Bates is really is really good in this one as Lloyd Courtley. I really like him. Great at he's a great actor anyway. I love him in Dr. Jekyll and Sister Hyde and uh Horror Frankenstein, I really like them in. Ooh, Alice is sneaking out, sneaking away at Paul. Oh, she's going to be in big trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Hargood would not be happy.
asking Paul, uh, her young lover wants her to come away with him, you know, run away from home and go be with Paul, you know. He's going to start his own business and stuff. She's like, no, I can't, I can't do that. I can't leave my mother. She loves her mother, you know. Regardless of how her father treats her, you know, I suppose she still loves him too, you know, you know, he's a piece of crap. I can't just run away and leave her. Again, look at it. Outside in the dark, the beautiful shots outside and the house and the and the, and the garden you'll see too, like outside is very beautiful. Can't say enough about the direction of Peter Sadsey here, you know. Um you know, Terrence Fisher is kind of known as being the great director of so many of the classic camera films, including, you know, Horror of Dracula and, you know, some of the other Hammer Dracula movies. But, you know, Peter Sazdy certainly holds his own in this movie. He does a great job. This is a great story and cast is impeccable, excellent acting. Uh, my favorite Hammer Horror has to be Dr. Jekyll and Sister Hyde, Twins of Evil and Vampire Lovers. Nice. I was just talking about uh, Vampire Lovers uh, because Madeline Smith is in this movie. <laughs> Did you know that, Marty? She's in the, the brothel scene there. Madeline Smith is kind of the main, you know, aside from She's the co-star of Vampire Lovers along with Ingrid Pitt, you know. So Lord Courtley takes uh, takes these rich men to meet the guy who got the the cape and cowl and a uh, ring from Dracula. And their plan is to buy it from Lord Courtley, and uh, they will engage in the satanic rituals uh, at this abandoned church. They're going to have a black mass and, you know, all kinds of shenanigans ensue, right, Marty? <laughs> They're all, like, freaking out. But they're intrigued. Hamahar was the first place I ever see boobs. <laughs> oh yeah, is that right? Yeah, this was the first film in the series to be R-rated, Marty. The one before this was G-rated. G-rated. And I'm, I'm guessing this was R because, you know, there is some nudity, but there's also the the satanic stuff that, you know, might be considered taboo. You know what else was G was Countess Dracula. <laughs> like... There's plenty of nudity in that movie. You know? I think it's, I think it was at least a PG, but I think it might have been G, you know. But I mean, look at all the nudity in that movie. I mean, you see all of Ingrid Pitt there and several others. The blood and you know, all kinds of murder, you know. Hmm. 
a little apprehensive when they when they tell him the price though. One thousand guineas, whatever that is. <laughs> you won't regret it. I swear in his name. The master Dracula. You can tell the one guy, the short guy, is like he doesn't really want any part of it. <laughs> oh, so you don't want to be in the circle anymore? He's like fine, you know. And may the devil take good care of you. <laughs> There's the Dracula's crest. And they got Dracula's blood, which is just powder right now in this tube capsule thing. And we'll see what they do with that coming up here soon. Look at this guy, the father's piece of work, man. But they're all intrigued, but they like, they got the box with the, you know, Dracula's crest and cape and everything. They're all intrigued, but they're like worried at the same time, you know, like, hmm, this, I don't know about this, you know. Some sick stuff. Again, we get this great shot in the dark, in the woods, on the stagecoach, you know. Great stuff. Classic Hammer, man. This is a classic Hammer film, for sure. 100%. <laughs> and it's got a great score, too. I think this is the last time in the Dracula series that they had, like, a well, I suppose Scars of Dracula had a decent score too, but once we get into Dracula AD 1972, it starts going downhill with the score, you know? <laughs> but this just has that classic, you know, hammer score that you see in a lot of the Dracula movies and the Frankensteins and all the Gorgon and all that stuff. Classic horror score right here. And it goes perfectly with this movie. I mean, look at this atmosphere here. The fog and the mist in the air, you know. In the dark, going to the gothic abandoned church there next to the graveyard. Oh, man, this is classic horror stuff, you know. Amazing. I love it. Big, beautiful gothic church. Look at that. <laughs> I wonder how they found that. I mean, is, is that, I wonder if that's a church that's in use or if it's just some abandoned church. Talk about desecration of the church, the holy church. They're doing, he's got it set up as a black mask with the black candles and the, the altar of sacrifice, like Slayer says. <laughs> Look at the inside of this church. It's it's incredible. Yes, Ben Grimm and his hammer time. Welcome. If you guys are just joining us, we are doing live stream commentary. Uh, watch along for Taste the Blood of Dracula, which is the fifth film in the Hammer Dracula series, starring Christopher Lee, Linda Hayden, uh, Ralph Bates, John Carson, fantastic cast, and obviously Christopher Lee as Count Dracula. And right now they're in the abandoned church about to have the Black Mass ceremony, the Black Magic Rites. And we'll see what Lord Courtley's plans are here. You know? Obviously, they're not good. <laughs> he has evil intentions. And you got the image there of... Uh, Uh, 
uh, what do you call him? Baphomet there. Very much associated with the devil, you know. Even though technically in, in witchcraft he's not really the devil himself, but you often see Baphomet associated with the devil or being the devil. That's certainly a dark character, you know. <laughs> this goat like figure with horns and the with wings and <laughs> Freaky, it's really freaky. I remember talking to my uh, wife about it, like, because I go into, if you go into, like, witchcraft stores and stuff, they'll have these statues of Baphomet and stuff. And Christy told me there uh, that there's no devil in witchcraft or black magic. I'm like, what are you talking like that looks like the devil to me, you know? Like what is that then? <laughs> yeah. But there's like some kind of story to it. I'm not, I don't know all the details, but But Christy would know they know a little bit about witchcraft. <laughs> And we do have Salem nearby here, Salem, Massachusetts. I, I love going there, and I, I always find it interesting going into those like witch shops and stuff. I find, I find it interesting witchcraft stuff. You know, you know, I don't really believe in it or anything, but I, I get, in, I'm intrigued by it. I'm uh, interested in it. Probably because I'm so into horror and stuff, and but not that witchcraft is really about horror. You know, it's like there's there's a good side to it. The the a lot of them are good people. You know, it's not about worshiping the devil or anything. You know, <laughs> they just. They cast a lot of spells for good, or or they 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 get the fortune tellers. They you know they want to tell people about their future. You know that's all. You know there's no like malice or evil behind it. That's the thing people often uh, mistake witchcraft for black magic with us two different things, you know. That's the dark arts, the dark side of magic, you know. Here we go. They got the goblets and they poured the uh, Dracula's blood, powdered blood into the, the goblets. Lord Courtly just slashed uh, his hand and, you know, he's going to drip the blood into the goblets. And you hear the, the thunder and lightning in the background. <laughs> it's free. It's, it's pretty sick stuff. It's freaky. You know, you see the the blood, you know, rise, you know. The powdered blood rises and becomes real blood and starts to fill the cup. And 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 then it overflows throughout the cup, and then the guys are like freaking out. And then uh, Ralph Bakes is like, "Drink it, drink it." The blood is bubbling up, and that bright red hammer blood, you know. <laughs> Like, ugh, it's spilling over the cup and dripping all over the guy's hand. <laughs> they, these guys are freaking out. And like, what the hell did I get myself into? Now 
what you believe. Drink it! Drink it! <laughs> Did you not hear me? I said drink it! You're like, no. <laughs> drink, damn you! I can't. You drink it. You drink the filth. <laughs> you pathetic, spineless fools. He's like, all right. They're all freaking out. He drank it. Ah, he's like choking on it and the blood's pouring out of his mouth. You see it's like killing him. He's like bugging. Help me. They're all like, they don't know what to do, you know. And they don't exactly handle it the right way. They start beating on him. I'm like, what? Why are they killing him, you know? Start kicking them and beating them with the with their canes and and now he's dead. Lord Courtly is dead. And they're like, "Oh shoot, we just killed him." And they're just like, "Uh, okay, I'm out of here. <laughs> just leave the poor guy dead." Don't do a damn thing about it. Because obviously they don't want to ruin their reputation. They don't want to ruin their status in the community by letting people know this insanity that they've been involved in. It's a great, it's a great story. I love it. Some of the other films in the franchise are kind of the plot's a little bit thin, you know. <laughs> and that's coming from me, a big fan of the franchise. But plot wise, I think this is a really good story, you know. The others are kind of pretty straightforward, just vampire stories. This is like. There's more to it than that, you know. But sometimes I wonder what it, this would have been like without, if they didn't have Christopher Lee and that whole, the whole Dracula thing, you know. Uh, it was just. Ralph Bates with this guy being this guy, Lord Courtly or whatever, you know. Wonder how it would have turned out. Would it would it have been successful? I don't know. Would it have been as good? <laughs> you know, I don't think. I kind of think it wouldn't have been as good. I don't know. I I think it's perfect that they had him, you know, and that they melded him into the story. <laughs> He's trying to cover his tracks, uh, Alice's father here. I was at home all evening. You hear me? I was at home. <laughs> no, you weren't. Won't you tell me what's wrong? The poor wife, his poor wife, you know. I feel bad for her. Why are you with this scumbum? Uh oh, what's going on? Courtly's body. <laughs> 
Blow the camera shot. We 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 we. The wind blowing and he's turning into like dust. But then his body kind of like freezes or something and then it cracks his head cracks open and there's Dracula. <laughs> he becomes Dracula. Christopher Lee is back, baby. Look at his eyes. Blood red eyes. They have destroyed my servant. They will be destroyed. <laughs> oh, I love it. It's freaking awesome. Here we meet up with uh, Alice's uh, best friend, played by Isla Blair, Lucy Paxton. And the name Lucy is important in Dracula hith history, right from the original novel, Dracula. <laughs> Funny how they use that again. Again, look at the beautiful costume design there, you know. Classic, I love it. There's such a a classiness to these movies. That's what I love about them, you know. They're very elegant. It's elegant horror, you know. It's classy horror. That's what I love about Hammer so much, you know. And I'm a guy. Another reason I love these movies so much is I love period movies. And I love... I do have an interest in history and that era of time, you know, back in the back in the kind of Renaissance era days, and you know, I was getting intrigued by that era, like you know, King Henry type stuff, you know, in old England. Well, the way they talk and the way they dress and, the, you know, I wish I lived back in those days, you know. What would it have been like? I mean, imagine living in one of these gothic mansions like this guy here, you know, uh, John Carson playing Jonathan Secker here. And his son is the boyfriend of Lucy. So, yeah, they're all connected, you know, the fathers and the and their children are all connected, you know. It's kind of a small circle of friends and family and boyfriends and Gorge gorgeous woman, Linda Hayden. <laughs> the beautiful eyes, beautiful hair, great body, everything. <laughs> He's like a perfect 10. I just did one, yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, there's more to come. <laughs> JKS, 80s horror fan, asks, have I missed the Christopher Lee impression? <laughs> well, that's probably his biggest line in the movie, though, right there. <laughs> 
<laughs> he doesn't have a whole lot of lines in this movie, unfortunately. Uh, but he certainly makes the most of it. His presence is what makes it, you know. His he's really menacing in this movie. Very intimidating and evil. Evil. This dude's a boozer. This guy's always drunk. <laughs> Ready to go back out. He says his daughter can't leave. His daughter can't go to the party. But here he is going out. Oh, it's okay for you to go out. <laughs> and she's a grown woman, you know. Grown ass woman. So the boyfriend shows up knocking on the door. You know, is, is uh, Alice here? You know, she cannot go out this evening. He's like, might I ask why? He's like, can you tell me what have I done to make you hate me so much? You don't have to do anything, young man. <laughs> He's a piece of work. Hey, Dino. What's going on, dude? Got the late late horror show in the house. So yeah, thank you everyone who's joined me in the chat today. Trash Pitch Show. Ben Grimm, JKS 80s Horror Fan, and Late Late Horror Show. Yes. We are watching the awesome Taste the Blood of Dracula. From 1970, from Hammer's Films, starring the great Christopher Lee as Count Dracula, of course. Mm -hmm. But the boyfriend stayed behind and went around the back and uh, called up to uh, Alice up in their room, convinced her that. Escape the house and leave to go to the party. Ah, there's Dracula. Rising from his coffin in this abandoned church. What a odd place for Dracula to be. Of course, the the church has been vilely desecrated at this point, so I'm guessing that's how he's able to reside there and, and to sleep there in the coffin because it's been desecrated so bad, you know, with the black mass and all that. Dracula's blood. And the aristocrats are getting together, talking about what happened with Lord Courtley. You know, they haven't heard anything in the news about his body being discovered or anything, you know. And as far as they can tell, they've gotten away with it, with him killing him. I mean, I don't know so much if, is it, if they killed him, but... <laughs> You know, drinking Dracula's blood killed him, you know. It's not really clear. <laughs> but they believe they killed him and that they got away with murder, you know. And now they're trying to cover their tracks. They're trying to cover their ass, you know. And John Carson's character, Jonathan Secker, was just telling Mr. Ha uh, Mr. Paxton, uh, you know, keep an eye on Mr. Hargood because he's drinking so much and, uh, you know, that might loosen his lips, so to speak. Oh, Alice, you bad girl, you got, you got away. Good night, darling. I love you. Up, oh, 
father's drunk and disorderly now, sneaking in, creeping into Alice's room. That's creepy. But she knows she's been caught because he told her not to go out. I was out with Paul. Father, I love him. I know it was wrong of me. It was wrong of you. You'll be punished for it. I'm going to punish you. You know, whip her with his cane. I'm going to whip you, Alice. Please don't touch me. I haven't beat you since you were a little girl. Well, so he beats her on her, huh? <laughs> nice. Not only does he keep her locked up in their room, he beats on her, too. He's a great guy, this guy. <laughs> Swing and a miss. <laughs> so she's crawling out the window now. Try to find Paul. I mean, look at this. The scenery here uh, it's, it's just fantastic look at that beautiful garden in the the backyard and look at the lighting and then of course dracula alice who are you how do you know my name <laughs> hey look at him that guy is awesome. He's just like... <laughs> See his bloodshot eyes up close. And she's taken in. She is seduced. By Dracula. <laughs> this is some of my favorite work of Christopher Lee's in the franchise, even though he barely has any lines. He just seems extra evil in this one. I don't know. <laughs> like, he's just like so menacing. As the father stumbled out into the backyard, Christopher Lee's like, take care of my light work, you know. <laughs> now that Alice is under the spell of the master, Dracula. He kind of spins her around and pushes her towards the father. You know what to do. He doesn't have to say anything, see? <laughs> that says it all. His, her job is to kill him. She's going to kill her own father. Not that he doesn't have it coming. <laughs> You're going to be whipped, do you hear me? Whipped. Yeah, I don't think so. No. Boom! Shovel right to the dome. <laughs> Is Dracula triumphant? The first. Yes, the count literally counts in this movie. <laughs> like I say, he doesn't have a lot of lines. He, he's still awesome. It doesn't matter. We saw him with no lines whatsoever in uh, The Prince of Darkness. No lines at all. And he's still awesome. doesn't matter. Of course, I prefer it when he has lines, but because Christopher Lee has such a commanding voice, like that deep, powerful voice, you know, 
So I, I always prefer it when he has a lot of lines like scars. That's why I like scars of Dracula so much. He has a lot of dialogue in that. Um, but in this one, I don't know. It's almost like he focused more on his presence and his, you know, command of the screen, you know. He's really intense in this one. His stare, his everything, his mannerisms, you know, his hand gestures and things like that. Just something about him. There's just something about him. He has a grace and a charm about him, yet he's extremely evil. <laughs> and there you have, of course, Michael Ripper, who's in so many Hammer movies, always plays like a small role in like at least half of the Hammer movies, like. Uh, he's in several of the, of the Draculas, too. He's in Dracula Has Risen from the Grave. He's in Scars of Dracula. He's in this one. Here he's the detective. And he's probably the most useless detective I've ever seen. Because <laughs> he does absolutely nothing to help any of the people in this movie. <laughs> he does no investigation into the murders that are happening. Oh, he's just like. Oh, it's just no foul play involves natural causes, or, you know. Like, dude, you gonna do anything? To find out. So they're at the funeral now, and and uh, And Lucy spots Alice uh, off in, in the trees. She's like, oh, thank God to see you. She's all thrilled to see her. She's like, why are you dressed like that? You should be in black. It's a funeral. And she's like, come away with me. Come with me. She's under the spell of Dracula. Come with me tonight. Promise. All right, I promise. She's naive, you know. She's just, it's her best friend, you know. Of course, she's going to go with her, you know. She has no idea what she's in for, none. So maybe uh, next time, guys, maybe I'll do uh, Scars of Dracula soon. Yeah, keep it going. Why not? I'm having a gr I'm having a great time. Hope you guys are too. I'd say out of all the Hammer uh, Draculas, this this was one I watched next to Horror of Dracula. This is the one I watched the most. Probably I get the most enjoyment out of it. It's the most interesting on the best story and some of the best acting of, of the series right here in this movie. It's compelling, it's captivating and interesting, and it's beautifully shot and directed. It, this is a fantastic film. This is a Hammer classic to me, you know. I forget what I ranked this when I did the ranking of the Hammer franchise. 
Hammer Dracula franchise. Oh, that was a long time ago. <laughs> it might be different now if I did it again. I think I'd probably have this at number three if I didn't before. Alice. Oh, Lucy, what are you doing? <laughs> you must be frozen. Why are you dressed like that? But I don't understand. Just come along. Girl, you have no idea. <clears throat> There's no one even there to drive the uh, <laughs> the carriage. Like, whose carriage is this? You haven't eloped, have you? <laughs> Look at her. She's just having a grand old time. Like, oh my god, it's driving so fast. We don't see anybody driving the uh, the carriage. Oh, there's there's somebody. Is it Dracula? Can't really tell. It's probably Dracula. I'm guessing. And he's gone though. Hmm. <laughs> Just get that one little clip of someone, someone driving it. Off into the darkness, off into the, into the fog, into the night. Like, where are we going? <laughs> Loving that score. Classic stuff. Lucy's like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> it's a graveyard. It's like, why are we here even this huge old Abandoned chapel or whatever it is. Dun, dun. There, there he is. The man of the hour. Lucy. Lucy. <laughs> In that one like second, he was like the charming, inviting Dracula. And she had a big smile on her face. Now she's scared again. And she tries to get away and Alice grabs her. You're hurting me. Alice is now the servant of Dracula. She reeled her in. <clears throat> now Dracula has put the spell on young Lucy. And it's all downhill for you, girl. <laughs> the size of his hands, like... Christopher Lee was a big dude, you know? Big, tall guy, his long-ass fingers. A perfect guy to play Dracula. He really is. Look at his eyes now. Blood red eyes. It's him. It's Cartley.
Mr. Pax Mr. Paxton thinks it's Lord Courtley back from the dead. Maybe it was supposed to be in originally. <laughs> You can and will. <laughs> so they're going back to the church to try and see if Lord Courtley's body is there still, you know. Well, you're not going to find his body. You find somebody else. And that is Count Dracula. And still got the altar set up, the black altar there. <laughs> With the sign of the beast. Black altar of sacrifice. I was, I was kind of freaked out about that when I was first saw this with the, all the black magic rites and stuff. It brings a real weird aspect to it, doesn't it? It's interesting, though. It's interesting. But it fits when you're dealing with this dark, undead vampire. That is Dracula. He's doing the devil's work, basically, you know. You could say he is an acolyte of the devil in a way. They just found Lucy sleeping in the coffin. And they see that she's got the marks on her neck. The, the vampire bite marks. He's like, I don't understand, Mark. Listen to me, the marks on her neck. She's a vampire. He's like, what? You tripping, dude. I believe there's a way to release her. Like, release her? You'll win stake to the heart, baby. Pound! <laughs> then she will be free to die. Dude's like, what? I don't think so. You're not doing that to my beautiful daughter, huh? What do you want her wandering about in the night, living out the blood of animals and of human beings like herself? Decision is yours as a father. I can't. What would you do in this situation? I was your daughter lying in that coffin. Would you believe that she's a vampire, or would you? Jonathan Carson says, I'm going to do it myself, then, if you're not going to do it. He's like, no! Grabs his gun. Get out of here! Takes a shot at him. Get out of here! He shot him in the arm.
Mm -hmm. Uh-oh, it's getting dark. We are at dawn. They sleep. It's time for Lucy to wake up. And the father's still got the stake in her pan. He's like, no, I can't do it. I can't. And she just opened her eyes. And there's Dracula. Lucy. And there's Alice. Alice grabs the stake. No. <laughs> Lucy don't give a F. She's a vampire now. Oh. <laughs> Put the stake through the father's heart. And he ain't a vampire. <laughs> Still gonna kill him. <laughs> the second. Yes, the count is counting. Yes, he... <laughs> Like the count in freaking Sesame Street. Two cookies, three cookies. Well, Jonathan is the only one left now. You think he's going to make it? <laughs> They're all gone. They're all, they all took off. This is daylight now. Of course, none of these guys go to the hospital when they get injured because then they would get found out, you know, be like, oh, where were you when that guy got killed, you know? If anybody is just join us, we are watching Taste the Blood of Dracula from 1970. And, uh, yeah, one of two movies released in the Hammer Dracula franchise in 1970. The second being Scars of Dracula. Yes, released on the same year. Uh, and, yes, we are dedicating this show to the lovely, the late, the legendary Veronica Carlson, who just recently passed away about what, about a week ago now or something. Yeah, very sad. My wife just texted me. <laughs> Sorry about that. But 
But yeah, we're uh, closing in on the final act here. Uh, things are going to get really interesting now. I gotta go. And then I gotta go run to pick up the wife and get ready for work tonight. <laughs> Unfortunately, sucks working two jobs. It really does. If any people out there do, you know, it's not fun. It's not. <laughs> Of course, there's still time to save young Alice because she's not yet a vampire. She's just under the spell of Christopher Lee as Dracula. But she has not yet been bitten. She's just under his spell. She's been seduced by him. But it's kind of a thing with Dracula. You know, he doesn't. Obviously, he's infatuated with Alice and wants him her to be his ultimate bride. He always has one girl that he wants more than anybody, and that's the one that he can't have or or tries so hard to get and can't, you know. That's how it always is in, like, every movie. Last one, it was Veronica Carlson, you know. Da, da, da. <laughs> the third. <laughs> That's it. They're all dead now. All the men that were involved in killing Lord Courtly are dead, just like he said. You'll destroy my servant. <laughs> They will be destroyed. <laughs> now it's time for Lucy's end. Because Dracula has no further use for her. <laughs> All he cares about is Alice and killing, getting more blood. That's all he cares about. Keeping himself alive, you know. He's an evil bastard, you know. And he ain't going to give anyone any credit or let anybody else do anything, you know, <laughs> that, that takes away from him, you know, and his mission. Is Michael Ripper again the most useless detective ever? He might as well be Inspector Clouseau, you know? <laughs> yeah. At least, at least Inspector Clouseau like stumbles around and ends up solving the case. This guy just does nothing. <laughs> You just think every the whole thing's a joke, you know. People are dying everywhere, and he doesn't care. <laughs> Somebody call Inspector Clouseau. <laughs> I think he needs to investigate this case. <laughs> Peter Sellers, where are you? That's too bad Peter Sellers never did a Hammer movie or something. <laughs> I guess that, you know, he's too much of a comedian, I guess. That would have been cool if he did, you know. Maybe he could have played a straight role, you know. He certainly was capable of doing serious roles, Peter Sellers. <clears throat> hmm. 
<laughs> I love how they make this guy Paul like all of a sudden he's gonna be the guy to get to get it done, you know, take down Dracula and save his girl, you know. He knows nothing about vampirism or anything. He finds out in about like five minutes. Uh, he finds the note from uh, Jonathan Secker. And here is the knowledge he gives him, like leaves a few books or whatever and leaves the cross and like, go do what must be done. <laughs> Here's everything you'll need. It's all up to him. And suddenly he's like Van Helsing now. <laughs> it's a bit much. It's a bit quick. You, know. you don't you don't turn into Van Helsing in five minutes. <laughs> that's that's kind of similar with the last movie too. Dracula was from the grave. The other Paul <laughs> did the same thing. He was an atheist. He was an atheist though. <laughs> At least this guy might actually have some faith, you know. And he found his uh, sister now, Lucy, in the pond. Left for dead by Dracula. Because she was of no further use to Dracula. You know, why does he do that? He just kills off his brides at the drop of a hat, you know? <laughs> he is... He's a tough critic, you know? They do one little thing wrong, and they're dead, you know? He doesn't mess around, you know? If you're not doing his work, then you're useless. This is one of the few scenes in the daytime, and it's still got that gothic f feel to it, you know? It's a fantastic set design here. I know where... It... Just look at the overview of the camera here, looking down into the church. It's an awesome shot there. It's like from the ceiling, like the camera's up in the ceiling or something. <laughs> Pretty cool. Spectacular uh, visuals in this movie. And Paul has come upon the desecration of the church with the black altar and the black candles, and he's ripping it all apart. Let's Get this evil out of here. And he's putting up the uh, the white cloth. <laughs> and the white candles. <laughs> Symbolizing the Catholic Church. Not the Church of the Devil. Again, the religious theme is coming into play here, you know. That's the only way you're going to take out Dracula. And there he has the cross uh, in the door. I just noticed that. I don't think I've ever noticed that. He put the cross in the door there. So Dracula cannot escape. And he just lit the, the classic Catholic-style candles. And the white cloth and the cross in the middle of the altar. And now it's a Catholic altar. He's removed the evil and the desecration, the dark arts, the dark black magic. And he's looking around the church for Alice. And Alice might be there awake because she's not a vampire yet, so she doesn't have to sleep in the coffin like Dracula and Lucy, who actually did become a vampire. And 
it's almost like the evil is getting inside Paul's head. It's kind of weird. He's hearing like voices and screaming and it's like the darkness, the evil that's inside the church is coming from Dracula. And there he is. <gasps> Get it away! Get it away! <laughs> He's my master! Get it away! <sighs> Did I do well, master? I have no further use for you. <laughs> Uh, ah, he tried to get out, but the cross is there on the door. I like how they show the cross there lighting up, you know, with like from the sun or something, casting the reflection off it. Look like the cross was like glowing with the faith of the church. Dracula's freaking out. He's like going up into the ceiling, throwing stuff. <laughs> throwing the wooden piers at the guy, you know. Uh-oh, but now he's behind the uh, the stained glass windows with the cross. Uh, he's freaking out. The bright red cross from the stained glass window. And now he smashes out the window, you know. Starting to, he's starting to like get dizzy from you know all the holiness of the church and all these lit candles and crosses everywhere. <laughs> Look at all the visuals of the the camera work with the candles and the. He's losing it. He's like, oh, he's getting dizzy and he's up in the ceiling. His eyes are blood red again. <laughs> he fell right onto the altar where the cross is and the candles were right perfectly perfect, huh? Just perfect. And that kills him. That's it for Dracula. Melting away and turning into ash. See his skeleton. He's deteriorating. He's decomposing into dust. Once again, his blood is turning into the powder substance, you know. And there's nothing left once again but his cape. His crest and his ring. That's it for Dracula. Once again. <laughs> because he dies in every movie. <laughs> and here is simply the power of faith. The power of the Catholic Church. And the images of the cross. Are what killed him in this movie. <laughs> and once again, good triumphs over evil. And Dracula has been destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, guys. That's it. <laughs> Dracula's killed once again. And he'll be killed in the next one. You can bet on that. <laughs> he'll be resurrected just to be killed in the end. <laughs> just like he does in every movie. <laughs> Classic stuff. Awesome movie. Awesome movie, guys. I love it. Like I said, that has my favorite like gothic tone and gothic atmosphere of any of the Hammer films, I think. Uh, so, yeah. Best 
gothic atmosphere in the Hammer franchise, in my opinion. Taste the Blood of Dracula from 1970, starring Christopher Lee, Linda Hayden, John Carson, Ralph Bates. Fantastic film and one of the best in the franchise, in my opinion. Uh, love it. Absolutely love it. It's, it's just classic Hammer horror in every way, and I love how they introduce the religious elements and and the uh, satanic stuff, uh, the black magic rites to conjure up Dracula. I thought that was in really interesting way of doing it. And this has one of the best stories, the best plots, and the best cast in uh, any of the Hammer films. I love it. Fantastic sequel. Very, very worthy entry in the Hammer Dracula franchise. So thank you guys for joining me tonight for my live stream watch along commentary for Taste the Blood of Dracula. Uh, starring the immortal Christopher Lee. And once again, uh, this show is dedicated to the lovely Veronica Carlson. Uh, rest in peace, Veronica Carlson. Amazing actress, lovely woman. And uh, yeah, thank you guys for joining me tonight, everyone who watched along in the chat, who commented in the chat, Tra Trash Picture Show, uh, Ben Grimm, a JKS 80s horror fan, the Late Late Horror Show. Everyone, thank you for joining me today. Had a great time once again, as always. And uh, yeah, next next time we're going to do Scars of Dracula, the other 1970 Hammer Dracula film. <laughs> Um, we're gonna have we'll have a blast with that. I'll have you can bet there'll be loads of Christopher Lee imitation on that one <laughs> because this one he didn't have as many lines, but uh, still Christopher Lee was awesome in this one. All right, guys, I'm gonna go. Uh, have a great day. Uh, enjoy your week. Uh, hopefully, you have some better weather weather this week. And uh, thank you for joining me, Sean Patrick Urshan, in the horror corner. Tune in. And stay scared. Have a great one, guys. Peace out. <laughs>